so um, we, we heard to date presentations from really, really large organizations. So we'll see that it's a bit different uh, word when we are talking about social sciences and, and, and our ERICs and what we are doing. But uh, let us uh, give you a, a round as it is. So SESDA stands for the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. We are an ERIC. But also it means that we that main office is rather small, uh, working on operations, but we have 22 members and one observers. And uh, on the right side is also a list of countries that are still uh, uh, trying to join in, in the coming years. So basically it's a main office where we are trying to do some operations. And then there are service providers that are uh, actually providing the materials to, to the users as it is. And the mission of CESDA is to provide a sustainable research infrastructure that enables the researchers community to conduct high quality research in the social sciences and also to con contribute to effective solutions to the major, uh, major challenges facing uh, society today. Um, CESDA as a, as a group has uh, four pillars um, and uh, yeah, Training itself is a separate pillar, but the training and the support is also offered for other pillars. So when a new tool is being created, we are trying to do a training on that. Um, in, in the trust, uh, a lot of work is being done on a court trust seal certification of uh, uh, service providers, but we're also trying to, to widen and um, it's important to also have events uh, for that. So here's just a list of some things that we are working on. Last year, we have a roadshow. I think at the end, there were uh, five events on a different topics, uh, about two, two hour events, uh, where we uh, presented some of the CESA tools, but also we invited researchers to actually talk on some of these topics so that um, our research colleagues uh, could see how, how some of the data that is available at CESA repositories uh, could be used. Um, we also have a, um, a new page uh, from, from this year, and we did quite a lot um, on uh, putting things more visible about the events that are coming, but also one of the elements that we were working on is um, uh, training resources uh, catalog. Uh, so just to tell you, SESDA itself, um, as said, as, as the um, brand top organization is not delivering uh, so many events. Uh, so what we had in 2021 20, uh, were around uh, 17 events. You heard uh, Vanessa yesterday, um, uh, UKDS is one of the service providers, so they are doing their own things, which we are promoting uh, through, through CESDA portals as well. Um, we mainly have three targeted audiences, um, which are researchers as users of uh, secondary data that is being collected uh, by other research teams. But they are also depositors, so we need to train them about uh, different um, um, management, um, you know, uh, research data management uh, processes. But what is also important, and we uh, should not forget about that, that we also have repository stuff that we need to to teach, you know. And I think one of the discussions yesterday was that you know stuff is leaving, and you know how you train the new stuff. So we are working a lot on on the guides um, around that. So everything we do is published, yeah, on, on Zenodo on YouTube. YouTube and has quite higher visibility than actually attendance of the events uh, themselves. Um, as I told you before, we are now uh, putting all the materials in the uh, training resource catalog. Uh, the resource catalog follow uh, minimal metadata um, standard recommended for the learning resources that was just published by RDA. Uh, so because this, is, this was just uh, done uh, this year. And because it's in everything is in standard format, uh, there's also an uh, API created that is going to harvest everything that we have uh, in the SSH open marketplace and from there also to uh, EOSC. Um, yeah, majority events were online even before pandemic. So just to make this clear, but there are certain events that cannot be delivered as good online. Uh, so when we are talking about mentorship, they still need to be in person. And a lot of widening events are basically more um, policy level events additional to the training. So it's really important to be in a country and to have um, also some of that. And what I added here is an images is also what we are doing additionally to not just having an events, what we are creating, you know, there was a game created last year on data management challenge. There was a quiz, but also we put together an event checklist so our colleagues um, can know uh, how to do things. Uh, 
think that's probably my last slide. I would just like to to uh, to say, you know, uh, one of the discussions, and I saw, you know, when we started this uh, this session uh, today is there are so many new tools that actually you need to learn. You know, before you came to the classroom, you just open your screen and it was there. And now it's so many new tools. You know, people need to be acqu acquainted with these tools and not go into GDPR because we know that many of these tools are, are GDPR problematic. But then it's also tools for the events. You know, you, you learn, but then you have an invited speaker. You're using a different tool. You know, they need to learn how to sc you know, screen share some, some elements. And it's a lot of these uh, technical um, elements that people need to learn. And also from the presentations today, you saw that, that you need much more trainers, you need much more support stuff and actually to, to do things when you do things online. And uh, one of the experience that we have in the past year is when you're really doing uh, hybrid events, when we are talking a truly hybrid conference, it's really costly. It could triple the costs of a normal event. And this is something that we don't have in budget and it's something to, uh, to consider. And yeah, some of the elements are here. I think we discussed some of them today and we'll probably discuss them also in, in the panel. So I think I'll wrap my presentation here. Thank you. Great.